Jonathan Collins, and this is my youngest son Bailey. Hi, everybody. And Dakota's going to be joining us from behind the camera in just a moment. We've got a really exciting recipe for you tonight. I had a viewer uh, send me a message, which is what Surefire Wednesdays is all about. It's all about taking wild to table. It's all about taking your freezer, whatever's in your freezer. Here's Dakota. Good evening, everybody. It's about taking whatever is in your freezer and finding creative ways to really yep. enjoy it. Yep. Yeah, so tonight we're going to be preparing, right? Barbecued wild, wild venison, venison Philly cheesesteak. Philly cheesesteak. And yeah, we had to say it twice because it's that incredible. It's that incredible. So, <laughs> number one problem, right? We, we're all, we, you're hungry and uh, you get home and you're like, oh my gosh. You remember the taste of venison. You're like, man, I can really go for some, yep. but it's frozen. I didn't have time to thaw it. Yep. A roast, yep. let's, see, let's see that roast, buddy. Right here. First of all, look at the color of this. It's so gorgeous. So you've got the, you've got the, you've frozen got that roast. frozen roast. <laughs> and you're like, man, how do I turn this yep. into a Philly cheesesteak? Well, we've got a way for you to do it. And we've got some other exciting things too. I want you to have a look at these incredible rolls. So these are actually, these are Amorosa style rolls. Yep. So this is a roll that we're gonna teach you how to make tonight. Look at that beautiful inside. Oh, yeah. So if you went to Philly, and those of you from Philly, I don't wanna get any nasty <laughs> messages. I'm doing my best here, I'm doing Philly proud. I love Philadelphia. This is what you'd get it served on. You'd have a beautiful Amorosa style bun. Now Amorosa was a bakery that really started, uh, this smells amazing, that started this. Um, and then we're gonna go to some really great familiar flavors. So we got bell peppers, and we've got a beautiful, I asked my wife to get me a yellow onion. I don't onion. know what that is. I think she just got the most, the biggest steroid onions. Oh, you can elephant put. onion? Elephant onion. Yeah. And then some portobello, it's the same thing here. I asked her for baby portobello, is this what you got me? You could serve somebody on that. Anyway, so uh, there's a lot of familiar flavors going on yep. here. But what I do love and what we love about this is this is something we'll make at camp. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Be because you can do this in one pan. You got, uh, if you have, uh, like your dad said, this, this roast is frozen solid. If this is still frozen in the cooler, what you bring up, all you got to do is take your knife and if you can, just real tough just shave those shave pieces it. off throw yep. it on the campfire over the cast iron it from it. and these ingredients are so easy to bring along with you i mean you have peppers mushrooms onion and a little bit of cheese all of those yeah. things you can toss in a cooler you can beat them up yeah. it's not going to hurt them when one thing we always get when we go camping is they're like oh we're not going to take that in the woods we always make sure when we're planning our trips we That's got yep. we got like a four by two space for the biggest cooler we got full of food because that's the best part about camp and that's, that's, what, that's what coolers are for yeah, yeah. so a uh, couple little bits of housekeeping here i want to tell you something really exciting uh coming up at 10 p.m randy newberg is going to be giving away a rain seven. a rain seven now this is an incredible opportunity for you to get the best Here, the best bow on the market um, you can do it a couple ways you can go to bowtech.com bowtecharchery.com or you can text randy to 313131 if you're in the states or 393939 if you're in canada and we really want to give somebody one of these bows we have something to give to you as well I want to get you revved up about this one of the cornerstones to our evening is this new Cuisinart Precision Master stand mixer. 
Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be giving away one of these beautiful colors. Now, they did not have blue, but we got you the red, the white. Yeah. <laughs> and we got you the gunmetal gray. So one of these can be yours. All you have to do is like this broadcast, share it, tag a friend who might like one of those Cuisinarts, and, uh, and let's get that Cuisinart working. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make one of these Amorosa style buns. It's just as easy as a little bit of bread flour, some yeast, a little bit of egg wash, honey, and some water. I don't think it'd get much more simpler than that. Yeah. No, and so the nice thing about using the bread flour is it has the baking powder and baking soda yeah. measured into it. Right into it. So it makes it really simple. The key to, you know, really doing recipes like this is being able to do it with just a few simple ingredients. So six cups going in. Six cups of this bread flour going in. You'll see I'm leveling these off to make sure. One thing that you want to make sure when you're baking, it's not like a lot of the cuisine stuff. You needs to be an exact science when you're baking. Yeah. Otherwise, especially with all that baking butter, baking soda mixed in, you can get really get some wonky results. And one thing I had no idea about until my parents became chef is dry measure and wet measure. I still don't fully understand it, but you got to make sure you got dry and wet measure, otherwise it doesn't yeah. turn out the same. Yeah. yeah, and it's a good point. So one of the keys to any kind of baking is to make sure to incorporate all of your dry ingredients first. So Dakota's going to put all of the flour in, and then we've got a little bit of pinch of salt that's going to go in there. Yep. And then what we'll do is, what we've got is we've got two cups of water. So this is just tap water, it's still water, but it's a little bit warm. But what that does is that helps to activate the yeast. So what I'll do is I'll put one tablespoon of yeast in. And uh, so again, what we're, by the way, this roast we're cooking tonight was from Dakota's first whitetail deer back in December. So this is one tablespoon of yeast going in. And then what we've got here is some local wildflower honey. And so what it does, why we're mixing those together, is we're going to let that sit for about 5 to 10 minutes. And what the yeast does is it actually starts to consume all the sugars in that it's honey. It's hungry. And it's hungry. It's going to eat that up, and you'll see that start to bubble up. And when it starts to bubble and come alive, that's when you know it's ready to go in. It's already starting to go. Yep, so you just need to whisk it. Uh, one of the things you need to know about yeast is that it does have an expiry date. Yep. So if you've ever had any frustration with bread or rolls or anything like that where you've used yeast, make sure to check the expiry date. I gotta tell you, you gotta keep it fresh. Once, yep. once you open that package, you don't have a whole lot of time with it. So literally, we'll just take and set that aside. But I wanna show you what it's gonna look like. So here, earlier today, we are working on some of this beautiful oh, yeah. dough. So this is one eighth of what we made. Yeah. So literally all you're gonna do is, this is this is the risen dough. So I'll show you how we're, because I'm gonna get these in the oven. Yeah. We're gonna take, we've got the oven preheated to 350 degrees. I'm gonna take that, I'm just gonna gently form that in my hand. And all we're gonna do is just kind of elongate it. I just wanna show you guys the texture of this dough. And like you said, this is only a sixth of it. So with six cups of flour, you get a ton of dough out of it. Yeah. And like he said, with the yeast, it expires quick. But if you uh, do something, like Code said, so few ingredients, make fresh bread every night for dinner, no matter what you're doing. It just, it tastes so good. And like we, we started here, we couldn't stop smelling. It makes your house smell like a bakery. That's how good it is. So this is the key, and there's a lot of confusion where this is concerned. So right now, I have this. I'm going to proof this again. I'm going to get Bailey to put this in the lower oven. Here you go. I, have, I don't have it turned on. I just have the lights on in the oven. So it creates a slightly heated, slightly humid environment. And one of the big questions is, what do you do with the dough? So Dakota's going to start mixing this together momentarily as soon as this activates. Yep. Once it comes together, you need to let it rise. So mix the dough. Let it rise for about an hour. It'll double in size. Then you want to take that out and you want to punch it down a little bit, divide it into the portion sizes yep. like I just did, and then let that rise and then bake it off. It's just that simple. Listen, Surefire Wednesdays is interactive. Yep. We want to hear from you. If you have any questions, there is no such, such thing as a stupid question. Yep. Believe me. Yep. We, you know, from the novice uh, cook, uh, at home to the professional chef, we all deal with the same things. Yep. So I think this is just starting to activate enough. Why don't you grab that camera, we'll show them what it looks like as we bring it together. 
So when the yeast begins to foam a little bit, first of all, that's how you know it's a nice active yeast. And you'll notice on the stand mixer, now you can do this by hand if you don't have a stand mixer, but what we have on is the dough hook attachment. And the beautiful thing about a dough hook attachment is that it does so much of the work for you. So you literally turn that on and then you'll see the foam. See the foam on the top of that? So we know it's slightly activated and I'm just gonna start to add this in. So that dough hook acts like the forearms and the hands of, uh, of a, you know, a strong baker and it starts to bring it together. Immediately you can start to see it form. You notice the, sh the, the kind of the, the travel of that uh, dough hook allows it to pick up all that. And what we'll do is when that finishes, we'll come back and we'll show you that finish. And, uh, and now we're going to get started on the prep for that Philly cheese steak. Yeah. I want to see how uh, that, uh, that frozen roast uh, handles when you start to uh, slice it. Okay, so you know what, that's actually a really good point. Let's do some, actually I'll get this prep out of the way. So one of the things I love about bell peppers is that they hold for a long time, uh, they're incredibly flavored, and when you're talking about, you know, kind of a palate, oh. a Philly cheesesteak has everything. It's got the rich and creamy provolone. Yep. It's got a little bit of what we call omami, omami which is flavor. literally, you know, if, if you're a good cook, you've got omami going on. What it is, is it's, it is a well-rounded, all-consuming yep. flavor, and the mushrooms really have it. Uh, and then, of course, the sweetness that comes oh, from the uh, onions. And, uh, and the onions are so sweet, and the bell peppers are a little bit both, you know, astringent and sweet. Right? They do. There's an acidity, yeah. and so when you saute them as we are, now we've yeah. got, out in our shop, we've got the asado grill going. We've got it up to about 450 degrees, so it'll be ready to go once we get out there. I want to show you a couple quick techniques, so maybe you want to do this oh, yeah. close up. Uh, one of the things about bell peppers, you know, you fuss with them so much. Some people, they'll uh, take a knife and begin coring out the center. I always love this technique because for me, there's very little, if not any, waste. And to me, it's so intuitive because the peppers, you know, they're three or four sided. So you literally just take the four sides down, you can nick the bottom off. Literally, no waste. And the other thing is, it's extremely easy. Yep. Once I've done that, I can just take that little rib out. So that rib is something I want to take out. And then when you're using a, I just need a, a cloth there, buddy. When you're slicing this, you want to make sure to slice it with the skin down. If you uh, slice it skin on top, that skin is really slippery and sometimes your knife will jump right off there. And then nice long strips. You notice the rocking motion of my knife. Um, you'll hear us talk about it again and again. When you're using a you have full control. Yeah. So it becomes an extension of you. Start by pinching the blade at this point, roll your three fingers underneath, and then keep the tip of it on, to, on the cutting board. And when you do, just activate that rocking motion. That rocking motion will keep the knife stable. And if any of you are a little bit timid about using a knife, this will certainly help. So there we've got, this cut is a julienne. So we've got a julienne of uh, red pepper. We're gonna do the same with the green pepper. And Dakota, before you go away with that, I wanted to show you something. Look at the work that this dough hook is doing. So what's happening now, we've gone beyond combining the ingredients, and now we're starting to knead the ingredients. So what would happen is, if I had that out on a board, I'd roll and turn, and roll and turn, and roll and turn and continue that for five minutes. If I've got a stand mixer, then all that action is taking place on its own, and I can bring that beautiful dough together. Code, let's have a, let's have a look at it here. It looks like it's just perfect and ready to go. Look at that. Like, all those sticky ingredients, and they come right off. Now, I wanna show you the texture of this, because it's absolutely beautiful. Bailey, look at the texture of this. Yeah, that's so, crazy, right? it, so it's it's absolutely beautiful. You can see it's got a nice little bit of reveal. So at this point, what you wanna do is literally just take a little bit of oil, grab a little bit of olive oil there, and literally a drop in the bottom there. No, in there. there. Yeah, in there. So, and then what we'll do is literally put it in, roll it around. This is just so it doesn't stick. And then on goes the uh, cloth. So this can be slightly damp, slightly warm. And then this will go to proof in that 
oven that I just have the light on so that I can get that nice rise. What happens is that yeast starts stretching its legs. It starts moving all of that beautiful bread flour. Yes, Megan, we have a question. Um, so Chris asked what kind of knife it is and what degree do you sharpen it at? Okay, so the best way to know what degree to sharpen it at, can you do me a yeah, can you grab a, a uh, match box? So, if you can possibly find the old matches, a matchbook, thank you, an old matchbook. A matchbook is the perfect angle to sharpen at. These are Zwilling Pro knives. Uh, it's something I've, I've used every knife on the market. This is one that I use uh, without fail, and uh, I love the results. It's important to have uh, one good chef knife, a paring knife, and at least a good bread knife. You find one? Perfect. Okay, so. Let me show you. I will come. Actually, Cody, you want to grab the uh, yep. camera real quick, and I'll show everybody at home exactly what I'm talking about. So, if you can imagine a, so this is a great steel, by the way. If you need now, a uh, couple uh, quick notes about knives since we brought it up. So, this is a honing steel. This will bring your knife back to sharp, but if you really need, this really just takes the edge of your knife that might be slightly bent or worn from even one evening's use, and it goes like this and it brings it back straight. So what you do is you literally, you find this edge, and using this angle, this is a perfect angle, and you literally draw it. Now you can do it a few ways. You can draw it down like this, okay? And especially when you're starting, this is a great way to start yes. because it allows you the confidence that if it slips, it's on the board, no problem. But that's what that guide is for. And you'll get comfortable with it to the point, if you do this on a regular basis, you know the safest knife is a sharp knife. Yeah. Always a sharp knife. Sure. Thank you. Who is that from? Chris. Chris, thank you, Chris, for your question. And when you are sharpening, you actually want, still want to use about six pounds of pressure. Yeah. So, you know, you're putting some muscle into it. i got to get some prep done here, yeah, guys. Yeah. yeah, the reason that you want to, you don't want to lightly graze that. You still need about six pounds of pressure when you're pulling that knife across that honing steel. Yeah. And if you're just starting, like he said, take it slow on the board. When I first started learning to sharpen a knife in the kitchen, it was one graze at a time, real slow. You definitely don't want to cut yourselves. And, like, he's been doing it for 10 years, and when he goes, he'll be, like, cooking in the kitchen real fast. He'll just go like this. But his face it's is the funnier. <laughs> it's like... Hey, <laughs> it's a serious operation we got going here. So I think we'll touch on one other thing, eh, while we're uh, doing all this prep. Is yep. We want to give this Grizzly Cooler away. I know we said we were going to come live yeah. last week, yep. but uh, we're going to give it away tonight. We picked our winner from last week, yep. and his name is Wayne Reed. Wayne Reed. Okay, so let's uh, let's read what, Rain, what uh, Wayne posted. So we've got uh, the brilliant Grizzly Cooler. Um, so we're going to send this out to our, uh, our good friend Wayne. Wayne has got uh, a beautiful, uh, you know, it's got a tray inside, cutting board inside, great carry handle. Bailey, you've got that story. Yeah, it's, uh, it's that, I remember what he said though, it's, uh, my phone's not trying to load. Uh, he said that he wants the cooler because uh, he goes hiking with his kids every weekend and it'd be good use for that. He's also going on his first bow hunting trip with his son. Yes. And uh, they wanted a cooler to bring all their little goodies with them. So, uh, Wayne, we're going to give you a cooler so you can go on those hikes with your kids, get the kids involved in hunting. And, and also I know we are uh, Carbon Icon DLX brothers. I know that. Yep. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so what I've done with the portobello mushrooms is I've just taken the stem off. And I, these are going to be beautiful, uh, nice big chunks. Uh, so I'll put those over here. Right. You know, you can imagine rolling home. Like I said, you're tired. You need something decent to eat. Or maybe somebody's popping by and you want to treat them. Let's talk about whitetail, what it means yeah. to take a whitetail a deer and what it means to be able to share that experience. Yeah. I mean, th like he said, this is my whitetail deer from last fall. This deer we took in late season. It was about the middle of December from a tree stand using, this one was a crossbow, an Excal micro crossbow. 55 yards. It was a 55 yard <laughs> shot. This guy came in and I just said to myself, you're not leaving. <laughs> exactly, and so that's I, what happens, you know, isn't it? That's what happens. They you know, get in your zone. Yeah. That's one of the things that I never expected. So uh, for those of you who don't know the Outdoor Chef or Fearless Outdoors or even us uh, guys, yep. we're new hunters. Oh, yeah. We're old cooks and chefs, but yep. we're new hunters. Yep. So for us, it's all new, new, new. Yes, Megan. Wayne says thanks, guys. 
Good bet, Wayne. No Thanks problem. for watching. And so I said to myself, you know, I'm not letting this guy get out. It was my first whitetail deer. I had already sat in that tree stand for two weeks in the middle of December. And, I and said, you had practiced up to 60 yards. Yeah, and I had practiced up to 60 yards because I knew it was my first one, and I really wanted to get one that year. We'd only had about 15 days left in the season, so I took yeah. that shot. It was a perfect shot. That X cow was right on the dot. It was actually uh, quite. I was up in the tree stand with him. I was filming him for our show. Yeah. And I remember I was just getting set. I was getting the camera ready, and he looked like he was about to take off. And I was like, oh, maybe, maybe not. But then he stepped into like this little triangle opening yep. in the trees, and I barely had the camera up and ready, and all I heard was a boom. Yep. I was actually so excited I didn't get the shot. <laughs> I didn't get the shot. And I hit the button. Hit the button. And after and Dakota did. pushed him out of the tree stand, and he <laughs> recovered fine, though. He, he was okay, stand. yeah. He was a little, <laughs> a little bit of I had the harness on. Yeah, but like he was saying, the experience, you know, like he said, he was in the tree stand beside me. Yeah. Dad was in the blind below me. Yeah. All three of us were there. We experienced it as a family, and that's yeah. what hunting's about, is that we want to get outdoors, experience it with our families, and all these learning experiences along the way, you know, they grow people in ways that until you become a hunter and outdoorsman, you will not understand. You, yeah, you just don't understand it, and, and that's something that, that makes us uh, so appreciative of this yeah. opportunity. Now, this monster song we showed you earlier, I want to show you the best way. Now, listen, I, I want to make, remember, I want to match it. So this is a Julien, which is just very simply a long strip. Yeah. So we're, you notice I have long strips of uh, mushroom, Hold that up there, son. Yep. Long strips of mushroom, long strips of pepper. So what I want to do now is I want to do long strips of the onion. And the best way to do that is literally to take off the top of the onion and to take off the root of the onion, making sure to take off enough that it will completely come apart. Then take and slice it in half. One of the great things about using um, uh, or slicing things and getting a flat edge is once you get a flat edge, if I try and cut this, look at this. This is moving around. This is not safe. <laughs> One of the very first things we teach in culinary school is stability. So it's flat, it's cut, it's stable, it's ready to go. Now, if I was to cut it this way, like this, across this, I'd have uneven rings, okay? They'd be all different sizes. But if I take it and slice it perpendicular or right from root to tip, and pass my knife through it, yeah. I'm going to get that beautiful julienne cut I'm looking for. Oh my goodness. Like you said, keeping that same size, because you'll hear us say time and time again, it's for cooking. Yeah. You want all your cooking elements to be evenly cooked together, otherwise you're going to get, you know, your onion's not going to be fully cooked, your mushroom's not going to be quite soft enough. And it'll come out like that, and all you got to do is just separate them. And then you have those, like you oh, said, you those long that. julienne cuts. <laughs> Legit. Oh, you need half an onion. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually a gorgeous onion. It's beautiful. It okay, so onions down. So you can see this is the kind of recipe you want to do after work because yeah. uh, you're hungry, but you want something as simple. Yes, Megan. So we have a lot of people saying that you experience with your first kill. Yes. Um, Elk hunting, yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's gonna be our so, first so year too. Yeah. And Mike says, get good knives or get good at sharpening. <laughs> well, you know what's interesting? Uh, getting good knives is the start yeah. because um, actually I wouldn't be without just one chef knife. It's yeah. worth spending the money. Think about it. It's just the same as this. So uh, it's a great point. So you can take, you know, you can take the Rain Seven, and this is a piece of professional gear that I take to the woods with me. And this, for me, is what I take to the kitchen. Now, I can buy a whole bunch of different bows, I can spend the time and money, or I can buy one. I can buy one that'll yeah. last me for years and years yeah. and years. Yeah. And it's the same thing with kitchen tools. It's really, really you're important. You're just removing the frustration from your life. You know, you can sit there and try and sight in a bow over and over and over again and oh. not have consistency. Yep. If you want consistency in the kitchen, you do the same thing. You buy one great tool, like you said, even if it's just a chef knife. I mean, if you can buy, what you need in the kitchen is a chef knife, a bread knife, and a paring knife, yep. and you can accomplish anything. Yeah. So what we're gonna do now is I wanna show you how this meat shaves off. And Dakota's gonna grab that camera for me. I want you to see the beautiful color of this meat. now. Um, as a professional chef, I've had the privilege of serving presidents and prime ministers, 
billionaires, royalty, you name it. I've had that incredible privilege. And I'm telling you, for that group and those discerning flavors and those, or those discerning taste buds, there is nothing, nothing like this incredible venison. Now, I, to be honest, I had high expectations and I really believed that we would find, you know, something special when we harvested and killed our, our first whitetail. But honestly, I never expected this kind of food quality. Are you looking at this? I mean, for me to do something, this looks like a slab of prosciutto. <clears throat> Excuse me. This looks like something, the marbling on it, the texture, everything that's going on in there is absolutely incredible. So uh, what I've got here is I just have a, a simple slicer. And what I'll do is, uh, and it's, you know, you do, I, I want to start off by saying slicers, keep your hand away from the blade completely. But I'll show you how easy this is. And all I'm going to do is just run my hand. Oh, hold on. But I washed this sucker. I didn't reconnect it. Sorry, guys. There we go. That's why he's not letting me use it. There we go. Nope. Still didn't connect it. The problem was I, I didn't let the mechanic do it. <laughs> Don't inflate his ego. There we go. Connected. So you see I get these wafer thin slices that are just beautiful. And the thing is they're coming off and that's frozen meat. Now here's the beautiful thing. I'm not going to do too much more because we've got lost. But here's the beautiful thing for me. This, I haven't defawed the whole thing. Now I can wrap this back up. I'll give this to Bay. He's going to wrap it back up. You know where that can go? back in the freezer. So I've got this, which is now going to be nicely thawed. By the time we get out to that grill, this will be completely thawed. I was able to do a quick meal. I was able to keep my, my venison in perfect condition. And I was able to make something really, really fast. If we weren't doing all this yak and I'd have this done in 10 or 15 minutes. Quick walk up and look at the color of that incredible venison. So if you by chance are just joining us, I want to remind you that we're giving away one of these beautiful Cuisinart Precision Stand Mixers. Remember, you're going to have your choice. We give you the red, the white, or the gunmetal gray. Now, we are celebrating this week because we've got two incredible holidays. We've got Canada Day on the 1st of July, and we have the 4th of July in the United States. So this is our way, giving these away, yep. and this is our way of saying thank you to you. Uh, and all that you have to do is just simply like the broadcast, share the broadcast, and tag a friend, yep. someone who might like this. Yep. Remember, Surefire Wednesdays, The Outdoor Chef, and especially Botech Eats. Yep. This is right. all about giving you an extension of the incredible outdoors yep. world. Right. Okay. Okay, so that is a great question. So here's the thing about slicing something uh, when you're butchering it. When you're butchering it, if you can leave it whole, you're gonna be further ahead. The, if you can leave it whole, it will last longer in the freezer. Um, think about how long ground beef lasts or ground venison compared to a venison roast. It's very simply, we wanna keep the air away from it. And I'm telling you, it was brandy. That said that? I'm telling you, Brandy, this is really simple. It's so and it, easy. It's yeah. so easy, and I'm telling you, it's so fresh to do it this way. Yep. You're literally taking and slicing it off way for thin, and by the time you go to cook it, it's going to be thawed, it's going to be perfect. Another yeah. thing is it takes away from the meat as well. If I sliced a bunch like this, put it in a bowl, had it frozen, then de-thawed it, it's kind of going to look like mush. Whereas if I take a nice frozen roast, oh, that's a good slice point. it yep. out, I'm going to have things like this where I could just set that on the barbecue and the results are going to be a hundred percent better. So uh, just a couple notes about uh, these recipes we're holding. Yeah. So uh, we've been running now for about eight weeks and uh, the recipes have been coming days after. Tonight when this broadcast ends we're going to have this recipe ready for you. So you're going to have two things. These beautiful Amorosa style buns. Yeah. You'll be able to make these at home. And then this uh, barbecued, uh, 
wild venison uh, Philly cheesesteak. We'll have this recipe for you as well. So, so you can cook it this weekend. Exactly. <laughs> Bay, can you go check the temp on that yep. auto and we're going to come right out in just a second. Yep. So double check your recipe there. We'll see Maggie. what else we've got. Yeah, man. Okay, so, yeah, so this is a hind roast right from the back way, out of, outside round, yep. and, sorry, what was the other question? Is it a semi-frozen roast? Fully frozen. 100% frozen. 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 Yeah, grab the roast again. I just pulled it out of the So we pulled it out, rock minutes. solid, and, uh, and you know, you won't believe it, but <laughs> it's frozen <laughs> solid. So that's the benefit of this. Again, if you're just joining us, you roll home, you yeah. know, maybe... Maybe you want to have a little, you know, venison hash on a Saturday morning. Yep. You think, how, you know, I don't want to, oh, I, I don't have any bacon, ran out of sausage. Wait, I've got that venison roast. Yep. You just slice some of that off frozen. Yep. That way, if you've got a great big roast, yep. you don't waste this. How many times oh, it happened have we dethawed the whole thing? Use some of it, and then you're like, oh my god, oh my god, it's going to go yeah. bad. we got to do something with it. Especially if you pre-think it through, you know. You know that when you cut that and butcher that off your animal, you label it, Philly cheesesteak. Yeah, exactly. And you know that that one you're going to take and you're going to slice pieces off that. So maybe beforehand what you do is you remove all the silver skin and do all that kind yep, of stuff. Yeah, clean it up. So it's ready to go as soon as you slice it. Or keep it in the freezer, you know, right up, right upstairs so that you always have a little meat. Kind of like you keep bacon in the crisper in the fridge. Keep this in the freezer. You want eggs in the morning? I had bacon a couple nights in a row. Pull this out. Slice some pieces off it. Make an omelet with venison. It's so accessible if you do it. This but what way. I would do, Brenda, is that if you wanted to pre-slice it and then refreeze it, I would slice it frozen, lay parchment down, and I would lay the pieces out and then roll that up and put it in the freezer. That way, you're going to get away from, you know, pulling out a saran wrap block yep. of all this sliced meat. Lay it out on parchment. Yep. Fold, lay it out, fold, lay it out, fold, then wrap that up and tuck it in the freezer. So my prep, we're going to head out to the barbecue now. I'm going to get Bailey the provolone. I've got my veggies, and I've got these beautiful Amarosa-style rolls. You know, when we go to Philly this summer, I'm going to go to this bakery. And uh, I'm telling you, if anybody is from Philly, or if anybody knows somebody from Philly, I need to hear from you right now. Okay? Let's go to the barbecue. I'll follow you. Oh, you're following me? Yep. Bows on the wall, our banners, our fishing rods, all of our bows hanging up in front of our office here in our little editing suite. It's pretty sick. Okay, so this is where the good part happens. So I've got my asado uh, grill. This is made by Coyote. This thing is sick. Have a look at this. Oh my God. It's look at this. 400, where are we? 450 degrees, and we've got a beautiful. Let's let's show them the fire down here. We got it. Oh, can we see that down there? I don't know if you can get that. Nice. So you can see now. I've got. I'm a big fan of Lodge cast iron. You can see here. I've got a, a, a cast iron grill, and I'm gonna put some of. You've seen us use canola oil. Now, I'm going to have a little bit of trouble because here on the driveway, I'm going to be losing some of the oil. But I'm going to go down. Onions are going to go on. Okay? And I'm going to do this in the, in the layers that uh, that they'll cook. So the onions will cook up. Bang, I'm going to need a pair of tongs, buddy. Okay. And then we'll throw on some of this beautiful pepper. Oh, man, it's, that smells so good already. The peppers are going on. And then I'm going to do some mushrooms on the side here. Now, the thing about the venison is it's going to cook really, really quick. I'm going to drizzle this with some more of this camelina. Camelina is a high smoke oil, beautiful fragrance. And this has, uh, this is cold prep. So it's just perfect. Thanks, buddy. So we'll just get these. You can see that heat activated right away. One of the things that's really important here is to get the salt on it. So salt... And I've got some pepper. Salt's gonna bring out some of the liquid. It's gonna give me great seasoning. 
And so one of the things about uh, getting ready to cook outside is to make sure you have everything ready to go ahead of time. So number one, preheat your grill. If you've got, uh, this is a charcoal grill, make sure you preheat it 30 to 45 minutes ahead of time. And then if you're, if you're using a uh, gas grill, propane or natural gas, 10 to 15 minutes is lots. But if you're going to use cast iron, get it in there and let it heat right up. 400, 500 degrees, no problem. Get a little bit of oil on it, season it. Make it they love the heat. Don't hesitate with the heat. Uh, it, it's going to cook faster the more heat you've got on it. So we've got uh, 450 degrees here, so I'm just going to keep on uh, sauteing this up a little bit. Another way to add a little bit of flavor if you want to try something new is change up your olive oil. You know, there's so many different uh, olive oils out there or any kind of oil. we got camelina oil here, and it really adds different flavors. I know they have like lemon oil and all kinds of different flavors. So the nice thing you can imagine, if we were in Philadelphia right now, and uh, again, if you know somebody from Philly, I want to hear from you. I've had a Philly cheesesteak on the streets of Philadelphia, and I'm telling you what they do. They're, they're slaving over these giant flat tops. They're throwing onions, and they're throwing peppers and mushrooms, and you can, they'll actually do it even with cheese Whiz. We're going to use provolone. Provolone, for me, is the pure Philly cheesesteak. So now that we've got this started... This whole process doesn't take too long, but you can see we started to get some color there, which is kind of nice. I'm just going to move that to one side, and now we're going to move into using this beautiful venison. So I'm literally going to start laying this down, and oh man, as soon as that hits the grill, it smells so incredible. And this is precisely why we slice it thin, because this is a quick cooking method. We want to get the heat on it, and I don't know about you, but being well done is not critical for me. I like it to have a little bit of pink left in there and a little bit of, you know, that means flavor and it sure does mean that it stays tender. So pepper, you can see it's starting to cook already. And some salt. And I'm just gonna close up that asado and we'll just leave that for just a couple minutes. That browned really fast, eh? Yeah, oh, that it came up really nice. Venison? So uh, not, so this is what we're using. We're using lump charcoal and natural charcoal, which is my favorite thing to use. It's a bit more expensive, but I'm telling you, you use less of it in the end. Oh, yeah. Started with uh, just simple newspaper. Um, you know, there's no chemicals needed. There's no gas needed. And the one thing is, if you have this around, you always have a source of fire. Oh, yeah. I was, I've always wondered, can you use like charcoal from your fire? Like, you yeah, of course. Fire? That's all yeah. that that is. That's what that is. So this is coming along nice. Now, look how fast that cooks. I'm literally, I'm just going to turn that over. We're just going to turn that up just a little bit just to make sure we got it all rolling here. This beautiful, this is cooking down really nice. That so good. Doesn't that look good? If you guys could smell this right now, oh my gosh. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to close this up and we're going to come back. Let's head inside and we'll come back to this. We'll come back in about five minutes. So, uh, like Bailey said, uh, this is kind of our uh, command center. One of the things that uh, we were able to do is to be able to share, you know, a wild... And I know if you're watching, I know that you love wild to table. So one of the things that we had to do, and it started with whitetail, is we had to find out what it was like to hunt. So we started this a little more than a year ago, and we began the process of doing everything from scouting and learning, and oh my God, what a learning curve. If you have any questions about how to hunt whitetail, I mean, I don't want to say we're no, by no means an expert now, but we've actually had the opportunity. We've got the trail cams out. We're doing our pre-scouting. We've got locations set. We've got four different locations set. We know that the, the deer that are out there. We've yep. put in. We've got our tags ready. Yep. And that's the thing. The actual hunt, it takes a, not a lot of time, time. But the preparation is something that you want to do way in advance. It's just like doing a really good recipe. You want to make sure you have all the ingredients and everything else is easy. Even hunting, it's all about getting outdoors. Every time... Every Every time you step out the front door setting out to go to your hunting spot, from scouting to sitting in your tree stand, it's all about enjoying the outdoors. I know we were just out at bear camp. We're sitting in a tree stand. You got a bear bait barrel 15 yards away. You're sitting up at a tree stand. Rain starts to come. You know, you're sitting there. Beautiful trees blowing in the wind. There's just, nothing like it. Take a second to memorize. But you know that. Let's check on that Philly cheesesteak.
So you can see that asado grill has popped right back up, 400 degrees. You've got plenty of temperature. Let's have a look inside. Oh yeah. And so one of the great things about cooking with uh, charcoal and any natural product is that you get the ability to get that smoke, to get that flavor that would otherwise not be there. So what you do with a Philly cheesesteak is literally just begin to combine this together. And I gotta kinda measure it for the size of buns we have. So I got a bun this big. I wanna make sure I get something that'll fit on there. Uh, so peppers on, all of this beautiful venison in there. And then what you do is you just kinda group that up on the uh, grill. And then you've got provolone. So the provolone cheese is rich and creamy. And what we'll do is literally just take some slices and it kind of acts like the glue. So we'll just put that over top just like that. Oh yeah, it smells so good. And we want that to melt. So we're gonna close that back up. And now we're gonna go inside and we'll come back in just a minute. So you can imagine if you had, let's say eight different servings, what you do is you saute everything up on the barbecue and then you line up, you mix all your ingredients together and then you can just literally line up all of those provolone coated mountains of Philly cheesesteak and then you're ready to go. Thank you. So I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, code. If you want to hang there, grab me the, uh, the, yeah, that one right there. This one? Yeah, I want to show you what it looks like. So we've been, we've been rolling now for a few minutes and we, this is what, let's have, oh, okay, so you can see. So this has now doubled in size and I want to show you what we'll do. Let's take and demonstrate this in real time. So what you want to do is turn this out. Now we've got a little bit of oil in there. You can see how easily that flops out. Just perfect. So that little bit of oil will keep, no, I think I should be good. This is great texture. So literally all I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to slice that. I start by dividing it in half first. That way I can really uh, get the measurements accurately. And then I quarter it. And then by eighths, this is just perfect. Grab me another sheet of uh, parchment there, Bailey, in the drawer. And then what you do is you take a heavy bottom sheet pan, and sheet parchment is really critical. So just literally fold that in half. And this is where having a couple of the right tools is really important. So parchment will keep it from sticking. And then literally all you do, base, just tuck that side in, just like that and just literally, just show a little bit of love. That's it. Just, and if you want a, like a shorter, fatter bun, uh, you can leave it, or if you want a more like a sub type of a bun, you can literally just stretch it out like that, and then you just arrange it, just like that. And this is something, I'm telling you, man, kids love doing this. Yes, Megan. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'm going to have to literally say, uh, that was John? Yeah. Uh, John, my friend, mule deer is something that we will only enter into this year. So yeah. we are, uh, mule deer will be a first for us. Yeah. Um, it's going to be something that, uh, that we, you know, we've got a few old timers that are going to give us some, some guidance. Yeah. Uh, but we, we're really excited about sharing that experience with you and all the other viewers. Especially in country like that, it's something that we're honestly not even used to. I mean, up here where we live in Canada, you can't see more than, you know, 60 feet into the mm -hmm. bush. So, no, I mean, you know, it's really tough to hunt, you know, like that. So you can, yeah. Oh, it is? Okay. Yeah. So what we've got here is you can see the rolls. So the rolls, I've given it, there's enough space between each of the rolls. That, uh, I can cover it just like this and put that in that lower oven and we can set that to proof. Grab me the one that's down there. So the key is to keep it covered. If you don't have it covered, what happens is you start to get a bit of a crust and it'll be unpleasant and uh, won't, work that, uh, won't work nicely for you. So these have proofed up nicely. Do you want to have a look at this one, Code? I want to show this process. No, in, uh, yeah, just cover that one up. So these were, uh, these haven't proofed quite as far as they should, but I want to show you how to do this. So 
all they do in Philly, I know they use razor blades, but literally all I'm going to do is just you take a slice like this. Look at that dough. Isn't that gorgeous? And like this. And then this is a mixture of uh, egg and water. So you just do an egg and water mixture, just like that, and on both. And then I've got, and it's really important to preheat your oven. So preheat the oven, 350 degrees, and then you know what? We're gonna go straight outside, come, so come on. So we're gonna pop this in, 350 degrees, and that's only gonna take 15 minutes. Let's go check on our Philly cheesesteak. steak. Which of that cheese is melted, just so nice. I bet you it's melted, I bet you it's ready. Let's have a look. Are you ready for this? Oh, yeah. Okay, so now here comes the key. You want to make sure you got your bun sliced. Now you can toast this, but I don't really, I don't think you need to. The other thing, sometimes they dig out the centers. And so what I want to do is I'm just literally going to take this. Look at this. Oh, look at the glue. It's just like glue, boys. It's just like glue. And literally like that. Come on. Now that is a beautiful Philly cheesesteak. Don't leave any of this venison behind. Okay, I'm going to come back out here and make another one. I want to take this inside to wrap up the broadcast, but let's go inside. Come on. This looks absolutely incredible. For me, this is the perfect street food. Something that you can eat on the go. I'm going to wrap this baby up. I've got some parchment here. Let's go wide on this. And... Uh, so this is a great way to serve it, whether you're uh, serving friends or you've got a, uh, you've got some, uh, maybe your boss is coming over. You give him one of these beauties, he's going to be one very, very happy man or woman. So that's how she would go out the door if you're walking the streets of Philadelphia. Uh, I don't know what to say, boys. Who, who wants to try it? <laughs> you can try it. Yeah, there you go. It's his deer, so we should. It's, it's your deer, so you should try it first. Just don't burn your mouth. Oh yeah, look at that cheese. It's so dirty. It's I don't awesome. Get any bun. And, um, okay. <laughs> he just wants another bite. <laughs> so a couple, yes. Uh, somebody says I'm definitely making that this weekend while we're camping. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh great idea. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we, <laughs> nice. We started hunting, we be, began the process about a year and a half ago. Yep. Our first hunt was less than a year ago. Yep. Um, and it was actually Botech that honestly, <laughs> honestly, yep. Botech is the one that inspired us. I had one of these Rain 7s in my hand. And just a reminder, Randy Newberg's giving one of these away at 10 p.m. tonight. Don't miss 10 that. Don't miss that. But it was holding one of these bows uh, that made me think about hunting in a different way. Yep. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I had one of those, you know, kind of small, cheap bows, you know, and, and you know, it brings you back. The moment you put a bow in your hand, it brings you back to your childhood again. Yes, yeah, son. What do you got, baby? No. Yeah, okay, thanks. Uh, it, it takes you back to your childhood. And one of the things, now I've shot, I've shot some, uh, I've shot some 22LR, 308, 30-06, uh, and, and, and I've really enjoyed all of that. Yeah. Uh, but when I uh, shot my first whitetail, when I, when I drew back and that deer was in, uh, he was uh, 20 yards, and when he, was, when he was in that zone for me, um, the bow in a moment, just a split second, connected me. To that deer and I know it sounds I know it sounds okay but if you're a bull hunter you know exactly what I mean there is nothing like the feeling of what it's like to it, it's more challenging it's uh, is good this matches okay it's, good it's like you're reaching out when that arrow flies down range it's like you're reaching out and you're connecting it's, it's an extension of you it yeah. really is so that's when we started uh, hunting that yes see Who's that? That's Michael. boy, Michael. <laughs> Philly strong, boy. That's awesome. Said, Zoe, my six-year-old, said she's jealous. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, 
I'm I'm no word of a lie that here with saying this is probably yeah. the best thing I've it ever eaten in my entire life. It, it is delicious. Yeah. And I'm sure right. by your time when you grow up and you're probably our age, they'll have something where we can reach the food right through the camera. <laughs> so a couple of things that we want to share. We've been rolling here for almost an hour now. Uh, first of all, uh, the boys and I and our families would like to take the mo this uh, opportunity to say thank you. Thank you for watching. Yep. Thank you for joining our journey. Um, thank you for watching The Outdoor Chef. And uh, thank you to our friends at Bowtech Diamond, yeah, Excalibur. They are, they are our best friends in the outdoors. Yep. Um, and they, they literally fuel our passion. Yep, yep. Um, remember, we gave you the red, the white, and the gray. So uh, for uh, Canada Day and for the 4th of July, yep. it's our gift to you to say thank you for watching. Plus, we want to get you excited yep. about cooking. Give, we want you guys to make this meal. You right need here. a dough hook. Need a mixer. Oh, yeah. You need a dough hook. Yep. Um, so if you have any questions, remember, so we keep entering now because we're going to give this away yep. net by next Wednesday. We'll do the yep. same thing. We're going to give this away. So all you have to do is like this broadcast, share this broadcast. Tag a friend, if you will, yep. and uh, by all means, uh, tell and, us why. Tell and, you know, like keep in mind this Philly yep. cheesesteak. This idea came from a viewer like you, yep. Yep. so we want to hear more from you. Yep. Personal message us, yep. tag us in something, show us what you've done, and if you make this, yep. please tag us because we want to see what you're making. Yep. We yep. want to see all your dishes. We just the one thing that we love about we're chefs because we love see we love enjoying food amongst ourselves, but we love. The reason that we do this is we love seeing you prepare this food and show us what we taught you. That is something, you know, you get messages all the time, people preparing your dishes, yep. using, nothing like using it. techniques that you taught them, and I mean, there's nothing like it. It's great to sit in the kitchen and have people enjoy your food, but this is so much better. It is. So if you joined us late, my name is Jonathan Collins. Yep. This is my son, Dakota Kelly, and uh, the outdoor <laughs> chef and know. Fearless Outdoors. It's all about family, it's all about the outdoors, yep. it's all about connecting you to your food in a powerful way. Yep. These wild venison Philly cheesesteak yep. barbecue, <laughs> this recipe will be available in right just after. a few minutes. Yep. We're going to take a picture of this. I was going to use that as a hero, but now I can't. I'm going to make, gonna make another one. Yes, yeah, Cindy. Oh, well, 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 that's something. Or, or she can win this, and then you can go at 10 o'clock and win the one that Randy's giving. That's right? right, that's right, absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, again, thank you for watching. Uh, remember, tune in next week. Yep. We're live every Wednesday for Surefire Wednesdays with the Outdoor Chef. Where, uh, you haven't tried it yet. No, I'm going to try it. Just give me one second. Chef Jonathan Collins, and this is my youngest son, Bailey. Hi, everybody. And Dakota's going to...